Hello, 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 and welcome to this episode of the Rent to Rent Success podcast. It's so good to be here with you. And if you want to be in person in the same room with us, come to Rent to Rent Revolution. Get yourself on the priority list to make sure that you get your seat. It's renttorentsuccess.com slash list to get on that priority list and join us. So for today's episode, I am joined by Adrian Benjamin. Adrian is an award-winning wealth protection advisor. And last year, he won Wealth Protection Advisor of the Year, which is incredible. He spent 10 years in corporate banking and consulting, working for all of the big names that you'll have heard of, like NatWest, Barclays, RBS, UBC, Bloomberg, Accenture, and Deloitte. Originally from Manchester, he moved to New York at the age of 22 in 2009, just after the crash, to work in investment banking. So welcome to the show, Adrian Benjamin. Thank you for having me. It's long overdue. Good to have me here. Yes, well... It is such an important topic that we're talking about today. So today we're talking about when you build up whatever you're building, whether you're in employment, whether you have a business, whether you own properties, whether you're still renting, um, all every single one of us needs this. And it's the wealth protection. And Adrian, I would love you to talk a little bit about how you got started. Um, and then we can come into why, uh, why this protection is so important. Yeah, so thank you, Stephanie. So how I got into our protection was actually through property. Um, I've been on the circuit for maybe four or five years, similar to yourself. And um, when I was studying to be a mortgage advisor, there was a, um, a module about insurance and the importance of it. And I was just thinking, you know, when I set up my own property sourcing company, all the clients would say the same three things. They want the cash flow from the property, the capital appreciation, and then the third thing is to pass it on to their, their children. Mm. No one knows how to do the third thing, like, at all. You know, and people might think they have things set up, but, you know, you need to speak to specialists to make sure that happens. So really through property, to be honest, and I think I found, you know, a gap in the market where it doesn't matter if your, you know, portfolio is small or large or you're just starting in property altogether, you need to have these things in place. And there's so many different products that we'll get into that, that can help people and you know wealth protection is for everyone it's not just for rich people as well yeah yeah absolutely so I wanted to talk about you've already touched on it a little bit why is financial protection important it's your ability to gain an income so there's there's different parts of financial protection so short term if you're off sick you know whether you're employed or self-employed um, you know, your savings are going to stop at some point. So there's a product called income protection. That's probably one of the most important things because even if you can't work for any medical reason, you're still getting income, which means you can still pay your bills and maintain your lifestyle. That's one of the foundations of wealth protection. Um, there's a product called critical illness. So if you were unfortunate to get a critical illness such as cancer, heart attack or stroke, to name a few, again, you're going to be out of work for a period of time. Um, you know, work might be sympathetic if you're employed and maybe give you, you know, pay time off. But again, that stops at some point and you don't want to have that stress of finances. So that's the second one. And the final one, you know, passing on generational wealth to your family is, you know, life insurance, really straightforward, you know, um, a term or an amount that you feel fit for your for your family. You can do that. So if you want to say, I want to pass on X amount to my family and we're going to use that money to make sure my my children have residential property and they can have you know or help them with a buy to that portfolio that's what that product is for so i think that's really really important for people and property yeah totally and anybody who's had a loved one die knows the nightmare of going through probate probate is where people decide what the government basically decides what's going to happen with the money that's been left behind and the basis of that is a will but again a lot of people don't have a will or their will is not appropriate for their circumstances so i think it'd be good to cover all three of those Adrian, so start with the one that you think is the most important out of the three areas. It's actually a fourth, fourth, sorry, uh, private medical. So again, we're talking about wealth and money, but to be healthy is really important. Um, I have a lot of family members that work for the NHS and the NHS is amazing, but especially in London, it's like at capacity. 
So with private medical, if you can afford it, you're actually helping the NHS by taking yourself out of the queue. Um, yeah. And with private medical, you just get seen a lot quicker. So again, it's a bit cliche, health is wealth. But you know, even me personally, my mom told me to get private medical when I was 25. I was like, nope, I'm healthy. I don't need it. You know, I'm invincible, blah, blah, blah. And then um, cut a very long story short, I had a pain in the back of my eye, um, which we, we didn't know what was going on. We saw a optician on a Sunday. I passed all the, the um, visual tests, you know, but the pain was still there. Then the next day, I saw a top consultant in, in Manchester. Again, passed all the visual tests. I just said to my mom, look, I know there's, there's something wrong. Like, can I get a head scan just so we can double check? So we went private, got a head scan, and basically I had a cyst pressing on my optic nerve. And he said, you need to have surgery tomorrow. So wow. for me, my real life experience of, I don't know how long that thing had been there. It was painful. Um, I didn't have private medical insurance at the time, you know, so, you know, having a procedure on your eye is very expensive. It costs 20,000, but you know, I'm, I'm lucky that we're in a position where we can pay for that and, and it's not an issue, but I know for a lot of people that might not be the case where they can do that. So from then it doesn't matter if private medical is like 500 pound a month, like I'm paying it because when you're in that situation where, you know, is it cancer? We're seeing all these specialists and they don't know what's wrong with me. It's a very scary thing. You know, we didn't know what was going on. Um, and to be treated, you know, that following day by a top specialist in Manchester is, you know, I'm a very big advocate of it. You know, the, the money thing we'll get to, but just staying alive and being seen on time. So even the NHS, there's probably still a backlog from COVID with, you know, there's so many people to get through. And like I said before, if you're able to take yourself out of the queue, you're actually helping the NHS. It's not, it's not, you know, being in competition with them. Um, so yeah, me having that experience at 25, I'm just a very big advocate of, of private medical, being seen quicker. You get to see who you get seen by. If I want to see someone in Manchester, London, wherever in the UK, I, I can do so. Um, whereas the NHS is great, but you're going to have to wait. And if you miss that appointment, you're going to keep waiting. And there's, you know, probably thousands of people each year where, if they just got seen a little bit earlier, maybe the, the situation isn't as severe or, you know, worst case scenario, they'd, they'd actually still be here. So I'm a very big advocate of private medical for everyone. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we all love the NHS, but it's so hugely under-resourced now and it's just going to continue to get worse as the demands on it increase. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, what, what, what a great story. So we've got the four areas. Do you want to just recap mm -hmm. them for us? Yeah, so for me, private medical keeps you alive. That's really important. Income protection. So if you can't work for any medical condition, <clears throat> so let's say you've got a bad back, you're suffering with stress or anxiety, you know, those are things that are more, you know, open now. People have more awareness of it. So it's not a deal breaker where, you know, if you have, you know, depression or anxiety, it's going to be a no from the insurance provider. You can still get cover. And the importance of that is, you're spending your time getting better, being seen by a specialist, or maybe just taking time off and just getting some, you know, rest and not worrying about bills. I think the media is just putting interest rates. All that's all people talk about now. Like 10 years ago, no one ever talks about money like this, but it's just in our faces all the time and prices have increased. You don't want to, these products are there to make sure you're not stressing about bills. And no matter how big your savings pot is, it will get eaten into. You know, they say yeah. you should have income protection, months. life insurance, yeah. private medical. What's the other one? Critical illness cover is the other one. Critical illness cover. Yeah. So let's. We talked about private medical, which is super mm -hmm. important and really saved you when you had that cyst on your eye, because who knows where that could have mm -hmm. could have gone to blindness? Is that something that possibly could have been fatal? Don't know yeah, he, it's when it's when he showed me the head scan. It was literally my whole head. He's like, "You need to be operated tomorrow." And then, just see, my mum started crying. I was this. I was scared, and then it was my dad's face. So if he doesn't really react to anything. He's proper old school. And then seeing him like worried, I was like, oh, "Okay, this is this is proper serious." Um, but again, my mum, you know, she was part of the NHS. She researched all the consultants across the whole UK. So we had the best one in Dr. Barlow, who I'm, you know, indebted to forever. And he made sure everything was really easy and, and simple. And like I said, the next day it's it's just finished, you know, and, and I can go on as normal. So I'm very, very grateful, you know, or NHS as well. 
seeing great people, but you know, the people at the hospital in Manchester like, literally probably saved my life. So yeah, yeah, I'm a very big fan of it. And it, like you said, Stephanie, it's scary when you don't know what's wrong with you and you're seeing specialists who are, you know, the top of their field and they don't know it, it's, it's horrible. So my heart goes to anyone who's actually going through stuff and they're still waiting or they don't know. Um, so that's mm. why that's important. <clears throat> Mm. yeah and so let's talk about life insurance because mm -hmm. here's another one that people often may overlook so talk to us about why this is important life insurance is important because you know unfortunately we're all going to go out sometime we just don't know what that date is that's what we all have in common but leaving you know a tax-free lump sum to your loved ones is going to really supercharge them and, and help them in a time of need. Because again, grief is, it's, it's horrible. You just have to, to deal with it. You know, it never goes away, but you know, if it's a case of, you know what, you don't have to work anymore. Like the kids school fees are paid for if they want to go to university, if they need help with a deposit, it just opens up so many other doors and opportunities, even though a negative thing has happened. Um, mm. There are communities that have been using life insurance for literally hundreds of years. But I don't think the general public think about it that much when they should. And the reason why it's under the wealth protection bracket is, let's say you get X amount of, of money, you can get a residential property, you can get a buy to let portfolio, you can start investing in one stock market, you can do all these other things, you can quit your job and do something that you're passionate about. It doesn't even have to be business related. You know, how many people are working in jobs where they're not happy, where and losing a loved one is difficult, you know, which I'm, which I'm going through. But just the fact that you don't ever have to work over again. Like mm. that literally is priceless or that dream house you've wanted or, mm. you know, the kids can have a deposit. I'm not saying to parents, like, pay for the whole house. I'm not saying that. But if you can help your child put down X amount, and which we touched on beforehand, house prices are going up and up and up. You know, we talked about the crash of 2009. Like, it's not happened since then. You know, no one knows. it. it will, will a crash have happened? Like, no one's going to know. But what we do know is bills don't stop and everything is getting more expensive. That's what we do know. Where, you know, you someone can pass away and you can leave, you know, properties behind. You know, not everyone is good with money. You could say, look, we're just going to clear the mortgage balance. That's your property to live in for as long as you want. And if you want to do other things like rent to rent, use it for rent to rent, example, you know, make cash flow that way. Like, you know, you have options, basically. Yeah. And the other great thing about life insurance is that, when you when a person dies and leaves their life insurance their um people who they've left it to get it straight away it does not have to go through probate probate the the releasing of the funds after somebody dies can take years it can actually take years in which time people can't get um their hands on those assets um so the thing with insurance is it's not part of probate yeah, and I make sure all my clients' policies are written into trust. So again, they get the money a lot quicker and they're not paying 40% inheritance tax. So I have a lot of clients that come to me and say, look, I've got life insurance, I'm fine. And I'll just say, is it written into trust? And they say no. So they don't even know that, you know, that policy, which is a great thing for their family, is going to fall into their estate and be, you know, charged 40% inheritance tax, which kind of defeats the object of taking it out. So that's why it's really important to speak to an advisor who's, who specializes in, in what they're doing. Absolutely, because we, we have to think of, and, and other people say, well, I don't care about it, I won't be here. Um, but do you, you know, you work for whatever money you leave behind, whether it's insurance or otherwise, you work, you pay that, um, that um, policy um, every month for however many years, and now you're okay with the government taking 40% of it just because you did not want to invest in the um, in the information that you need to be able to make the right decision where, you know, your your children or whoever you're leaving that insurance policy to would get 100% of it. That's the sad thing that that is, that is the case, you know, but the reason why, you know, the, what I like about my job is, is highlighting this to people and then them going home and having that conversation with their partner and their children. Like, okay, what is the plan? Where I feel we are just in survival mode from generation to generation. And the wealth gap, as we know, is getting larger and larger. Like, there are now more millionaires and billionaires than ever before. So your chance of getting that dream property is, is getting reduced. So this is why this needs to be a discussion for, for people. Um, there is a TV show called Riches, which is on, on ITV. 
and it talks about a um, a Nigerian British man who has a multi million pound hair company. He passes away, and then they're trying to figure out what to do. And again, if they just plan this and have the conversation, it's going to stop a lot of pain. You know, I have this conversation with with my family and what I want. You know, we go through it, and then that's basically it. If anything changes, then they know. But they're not asking why or what would so and so want, or even losing the house. You know, yeah. auctions is a part yeah. of property. I don't like. I've said this publicly. I do not like auctions because you're profiting on someone's financial misfortune of whatever reason. And I would love to know the stat of how many people have just passed away and the families can't pay the mortgage and they take it off. So even if you do have a residential property, which you put all the money into the deposit, you know, doing the property up, you know, you have to protect that. You know, you know, that that one policy clears the mortgage balance. You can rent that out to you, you know, and do Airbnb or whatever. And now that negative situation is actually generating cash flow. And because you have no no debt, that is endless. Right. As long as you rent it out, you don't have to worry about, oh, my God, because that's the biggest concern in properties, paying the mortgage. But if, if I'm saying, look, you've cleared that, as long as the structure is right with the house, that's going to be printing money every month forever. And why I got into property was because I was just researching the richest people in the world and they always have a tie to property. They do other things, but property was like the most common thing. You know, we, we spoke about property training companies. The people who set up these companies always say, I've still got properties from 20, 30 years ago. Yes. And they're not they're not selling it where sometimes i speak to clients and i say if you pass away yeah. oh the family will just sell it and i'm like if we have a crash like 2009 your negative equity you can't do that or two it take you can't sell a property in a day it's not possible two you're paying capital gain tax three what was the point in getting the property if you're not going to keep it forever and you're paying inheritance tax if there's no plan you're paying inheritance tax uh mm -hmm. as well Yep. And then if you sell it, it's capital gains tax as well. You've got to pay solicitors, mortgage, you've got to pay all these different people when you don't have to do that. And, and you know, profit. Yeah, yeah, if you get the insurance that pays off the mortgage, um, what's that called? You could just mortgage protection. Right. Mortgage protection. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So those are two really good ones. We talked about private medical, we talked about life insurance and mortgage protection. And what I was going to say is many people from yesteryear, say uh, grandparents or parents live in properties, which at the time were just about affordable, which now have gone up so much in value. And if people could hold that asset, it will continue to go up in value and it would continue to be valuable to them. But sometimes they have to pay off, they have to sell the property just to pay the inheritance tax. Whereas... If yeah. the parent or grandparent or the family as a whole had put that property into trust or seen an inheritance tax advisor, you know, that wouldn't be the case. Or if they had that mortgage protection. Yeah, correct. And it's just awareness. People don't necessarily think about it. And the reason why I've been, you know, traveling up and down the UK for a number of years now is just to spread that awareness. Like, why are you getting into property? The money. I get that. Capital appreciation. I get it. But, you know, you've worked so hard, it is literally life changing. You know, we all know that. Even if you have one property, right? The average rent is in London is what, £2,000 a month? The average, well, not even a good property. So that's £24,000 a month. I mean, a year, sorry, that asset is generating. So, you know, 10 years' time. So even if you have small children, that asset can fund them, you know, whatever they want to do if they want to go to university, if they want their own residential. You know, that's a nice deposit. It only took a year to get it. Right. And we're looking at it from the eyes of you don't have to worry about the mortgage company. Like once it's paid off, that's it. You never have to worry about them saying, oh, you owe us X amount and, and them charging you inter all these interest rates that people are getting scared of. That only affects you if you have a mortgage. If you pay it off, then that doesn't affect you. You you're, you're get in the cash flow every month. Yeah. 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 No, totally. And so important to at least put thought into it. I know a lot of people feel it's so complicated that they don't want to think about it. But that's where investing a small amount of money to actually get the expert advice can save you thousands, if not tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands. And in some cases, depending on the size of your portfolio, which it's easy to have a multi-million pound property portfolio these days, it could even save you millions. So... Yeah. Yeah, and, you, and you're right. And the way um, insurance works is the older you are, the more it's going to cost you, even if you're perfectly healthy. The, the, it's very cliche, but if you just get it done now, it's just going to save you a lot of 
you know, aggro in the long run. So if anything happens to you medically, I make sure my clients are medically um, underwritten. That can affect the price of the policy or they might say no to you. You know, if you're not healthy, you've got something going to go wrong. Well, they're not going to insure you. And that's what people just assume. They'll put it off, put it off. They'll do it when they're, they're older or they'll do it when they've got more money or a bigger portfolio. But I've had clients where I've had to say, I'm really sorry, but no one's going to insure you. So that plan that you've got, and especially with property investors, that portfolio, you can't protect it. Mm. You know, but it, it's also a case of not just the product, but the reason why I like my job is having that conversation of different generations, because that first conversation is everything's not going to get covered. People are going to have different points of view. Um, you know, they might not be there yet. You know, as they get older, they they find out that you know they're more you know something might happen they might be more ready for that conversation mm -hmm. so it's about getting your your kids and your grandchildren like all on the same page that's what i feel my role is for my product is just a byproduct to get people to speak to their family about finances because in the uk we just don't do it like it's a taboo mm -hmm. subject where other cultures they speak about money and their plans all the time mm -hmm. so it's not a shock to the system where we don't do that. And I feel my role is just to bring awareness. Like it's okay to talk about finance and plans mm -hmm. with your family, even though, yeah, it might seem negative. That's just the life bit, but the critical illness cover, everyone knows someone that, that's had cancer and how difficult it is. Yeah. You know, it's horrible, right? You might say, look, I just want two years. I don't want to work. You have yeah. the ability to do that and not touch your savings. We all know someone that's had depression or stress for whatever reason, I'd take time off work. If you're employed, that will stop at some point. You know, mm. statutory sick pay is £109 a week and it stops after 28 weeks, then you get nothing. So even though you do have savings, all these products are there, so you don't have to use your savings. So if a property comes up, you're liquid enough to do it. Mm. Well, that brings us nicely into the second one that you mentioned, which was income protection. So let's talk about that because that's really applicable to everyone, I think. Or is it only for yeah. employed people? No, good question. It's for employed and self-employed people. It's basically your own private sick pay. So when COVID hit, people, some people were furloughed. Just look at it as your own private furlough where, you know what, if I'm feeling really stressed out and I, you know, I can't deal with, with work, see the GP. The GP will give you a certificate, send that certificate to insurance provider, and then you can get paid a percentage of, of what you earn. So if you're employed or self-employed, it's, it's 60 to 65% of what you earn. If you're a limited company director, it goes up to 80%. So really, really important. And then again, with the whole mental health um, aspect, seeing a, someone that is a specialist in that to help you to speak to a counselor. So you paying that monthly policy, you get access to a qualified you know, specialist. If you've you know, had a bad back or you need physio, you've got trained physios that you're already paying for instead of doing it again out of your own pocket. So all the providers do have you know, benefits that are worth more than what the, the monthly policy is anyway. Um, so, you know, you're getting a monthly income, you're spending time with a the therapist or you're the physiotherapist and you're getting better. Yeah. And you're not going into your savings to do that. That's the power of income protection. So let's say you are employed, depending on your um, employer, they might offer you one month full pay and then, you know, maybe a month half pay. Some might offer a year's full salary, but it depends who you work for. So I always tell my clients, check your contract. But if they change the provider or the, the, the benefit, or if you leave, then you're financially exposed. That's where the risk comes in. So I've got clients where they are employed, they have the, the protection anyway, because they can get paid from work and then they've got their own private one as a top up. Because okay. income protection is to basically keep the lights on and you, you basically have the same level of living. Um, but if you want to do something big, let's say you want to go on holiday, you might not be able to do that because income protection is only covering so much. That's mm -hmm. where critical illness cover, where let's say it is cancer. You can say, look, I've got a big tax free lump sum. I'm just going to travel. You know, I'm going to say, you have options, basically. That's what these products are for. Yeah, no, it, it's brilliant. And then the final one, but we kind of covered it, is critical Ill illness cover. Yeah. So I think in the UK, you know, we, we see the marathons all the time and the stats, you know, one in two of us are unfortunately going to get it. Is not like you said, it's a horrible situation. You know, you don't want to be thinking about work. You know, you have an attack free income where you say, look, I just want to get better or even go abroad for treatment. You know, that's going to cost a lot of money. You see a lot of GoFundMe's for things with people, even yeah. children, 
we don't even think about children. Children should be covered as well. Children are not immune from these things where if you said, look, I want to see a top specialist in Japan or America, you can do that. You know, there's one provider that will cover you up to a million pounds worth of travel and medical bills as part of the, the policy. That's just really important. Mm, absolutely. And so if you want to know more about this, you can go to Adrian B Finance and you can also look in the show notes because at rent to rent success.com slash one nine nine will have the video footage there and also the show notes. And in that you'll be able to book a call with with Adrian and you can also check check out his website adrianbfinance.com which is on the screen uh so adrian it'd be great if you could just summarize you know where people should start what should their next step be if 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 people are listening thinking oh i i would like to have some protection i would like to make sure that what i've worked for i can protect mm -hmm. i actually have a youtube channel as well adrian b finance and that breaks down all the different products. So if it does seem a bit much, I've managed to get everything in. Um, videos are only like 30 seconds to a minute. So it could be like, why do you need a trust? Why should property people get protection? You know, what is family income benefit? You know, which is basically giving your family a monthly income if you're not here. Critical illness again, like all the products we've discussed, I've got videos for that as well on, on YouTube. So watch those, you know, go on my website. And then if you want to, um, a consultation call, then just book a book an appointment in my calendar on my website. That's brilliant. Well, thank you so much for coming to share this with us. It is so important and so few people speak about it, but I really love the down to earth approach that you have to it, Adrian, and that people can, you, you talk about it in a way that's really relatable and understandable. Thank you. <laughs> I, as we draw to a close today, is there anything else that you wanted to share or that you want to leave people with? No, I think the, the podcast has been quite, quite good. I think there's enough information there. Just, you know, people just speak to your loved ones about your situation. I think that's the main thing that I want people to do because I go to property events all the time and it's the case of my mum or dad's got this and, you know, they've not got a will and we don't know what happens. It just leads to, to issues. It's difficult. You know, these products are there to help you not to hurt you. Um, and also don't necessarily look at the price of it, look at the value and what it's going to do for you. And it is, like you said, it is life changing. Um, yeah. I just don't think there's a lot of awareness or people's perception of it isn't great. So even on my Instagram, you've got all the property events I go to um, as well. And just how, you know, people, it can help you. Even if you're not, if you don't have a property, you still have access to all these products as well. Yeah, absolutely. No, it's so important. I was reading an article uh, that was shared by a friend of mine uh, Vix Monroe, who's also been on the podcast, and it was saying that there are so many disputes about wills. And it was talking about all the disputes about wills, and that's all through lack of conversation beforehand, lack of planning, and this awful situation where people realize too late that they're going to use lose 40, at least 40% 40 of the inheritance that's been left, if not more or they can't access the funds at all, um, yeah. sometimes for many years while the probate's going through. So having these insurances gives you instant access to funds once, well, not necessarily instant, but much quicker access to Second, funds yeah. when somebody, um, when a loved one dies. So, so important. So thanks Adrian for joining us. And thank you for watching and for listening. And again, if you want to meet with us live and in person, make sure that you get yourself on the priority list for Rent to Rent Revolution live in London in October. Go to renttorentsuccess.com slash list. That L-I-S-T. That'll be in the show notes as well. Okay. For now, believe bigger, be bolder, be a game changer. See you next week. Bye for now.